Hi uh, guys, it's Thursday. I think the M10Q5883 Maytech GPS will be delivered today. They say the Flywoo GPS may be delivered today, but I don't think that one is going to be. So we're leaving tomorrow for a week. Uh, I'm going to try to get this done, but let me tell you a little bit about what's going on here. This is that FTDI, MRO FTDI. I've been connecting to the M10Q5883 GPSs that I have that I've been playing with here. Let me zoom in on that and show you that FTDI. So there's the little MROFTDI adapter. It's got a USB in right here and then a Justy GH 1.25 connector out. Uh, that's all there is to it. The little chip you see right there in the middle is what converts the USB we use on a computer here to UARTs. And actually this chip also takes care of clocking data on an I squared C bus. Uh, let me show you on the screen the pinout real quick on this adapter. So the pinouts on the MRO FTDI adapter are as shown here. Uh, pin one is VCC, two is transmit, three is receive, four is I squared C clock, five is I squared C data, and six is ground. Uh, the pinout on the M10Q-5883 is identical to this except for pins two and three are reversed on the GPS. And this is the pinout on the M10Q5883 going right to left, five volts, receive, transmit, clock, data, and ground. So a straight through cable works really good on that FTDI connector with this GPS. No problems whatsoever. Let me show you the pinout on the Flywoo. Here on the upper left you can see the Flywoo GPS slash compass module and going right to left on it you can see it's I squared C data and clock then VCC ground receive and then transmit. So they're not at all in the same order as the um, M10Q5883 or the MRO FTDI adapter. So I've got a little pigtail here that's got a Justy GH 1.25 connector on this end and wires, six wires coming out. Uh, I, I guess I'll hook up all six, really only need all four. So what I'm going to have to do is when the flywoo comes in the door I'm going to have to find out what kind of connectors on the flywoo GPS and uh, remake another cable to go between the FTDI here and the flywoo over here until the flywoo comes in I don't know what kind of connector is on it so the third M10Q5883 that I know will come through the door today. I will put on this and just play with it, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be like, oops, it's going to be like the other two. I ended up taking the other two out of the uh, quads to work with them directly. I just got impatient. And exactly as I was worried about getting this connector out because the hole in the TPU here isn't quite as big as this connector. 
I pulled out the black, the green wire with a pair of tweezers. I switched over to using a jeweler's screwdriver to try to get in here and pry and it slipped and cut the insulator on the blue wire. So the kind of damage, keep going back into stuff that I worry about happened with this. I've got all sorts of those little justy GH connectors so I can fix all of this up. I just hate doing this damage and if the flywoo works out of the box which I'm semi suspicious it will don't know why the M10s don't at this point got some suspicions but don't like to share them until I know they're true I'm going to have to rewire let's say that the flywoo comes with a just a GH connector exactly like this. The pins are not the same. So I'm going to have to resorter the flywoo if it's the replacement for the M10 to the flight controller again and I'll fix this damage at that time. Elsewise I'll be putting an M8 cube back on it and again I will have to resorter six wires to the flight controller and it will fix that this damage at that time. Now because the fly woo may not come today or it may come really late tonight I will finish this video before we go out of town tomorrow completely let you know what happens with the fly woo as much as I can even if I have to do it early in the morning before we leave. If the flywoo does not come, I will just send this video as it is. We'll find that out a little later today. Well, the M10Q5883 is here. It arrived. The third one of three. So let's stick it on the FTDI adapter. There you go. It's connected to a USB port. The FTDI adapter is right there. Straight cable going over. It isn't always a straight cable. It just happens to be on this uh, to the new GPS. And we'll turn on that USB port. Click. There we go. There's the GPS running. Now if we look up at the screen real quick. So I've had another day working with U-Center. I'm not doing much with this one right now. I'll just real quickly show you uh, one point here. Everything's enabled on this out of the box except for IMES. So when I finally got it on the other two on U Center and most of these were not on I think Mission Planner did that. This one hasn't had Mission Planner connected to it. That's why I wanted to get a completely virgin third GPS in here. They're not cheap. The flywoos are. The flywoos is only like uh, 19 bucks. Wish I could say that about the other ones. <laughs> so, having another day, nothing to really do <laughs> around here with this stuff today because whatever. I had uh, more time to just spend with U Center. I would say I'm using U Center pretty much. This is one thing I don't like about you, Center. You have to go up onto the internet with it. And it wants access through the internet to... <laughs> I don't want this performance requests at any time. Stuff like that starts to bother me. So, that's the one problem I have with you, Center. I can kind of understand it. But don't like it. I'd rather have a standalone program. I've gotten comfortable enough with this today. This little 
help right here user's guide doesn't hurt to have this open at the same time you're using you center too I, I don't really need it open anymore I got pretty like I say I'd say I'm comfortable with the you uh, center too now and just looking at a few things real quick uh, this is the one right out of the bag so to speak box everything's enabled here and those other two GPS's I had some of those got turned off although the B do whatever this is the B one isn't checked so but I found out today I can easily take any of those GPS's and click right here revert and they'll be back to this as if they came out of the bag which I've done to both of them didn't change anything uh, I've gotten comfortable doing advanced configuration in here for instance we'll look at the baud rate that's UART 1 if I want to change the baud rate I can come in here and Set it, excuse me, set it, 115, 200, whatever. I figured out that there's RAM in this module. There's battery backed up RAM in this module. But there's really no flash RAM in this module. So any configuration changes you make is going to have to be saved in this battery backed up RAM. So when this powers up, it reads the ROM on board and gets its default setup. Those default setups can be modified by the module itself on power up from the battery backed up RAM information. Uh, also figured out that little uh, iFlight fix. Basically figured out some of the iFlight fix this is the config file iFlight has you download as part of their M10 fix this of course is setting the baud rate to flash memory which can't be done so I'd clear that here's another flash I'd clear that here's another one I'd clear that if I were trying to do some of that with this particular module they're just going to fail. So we can see the the default baud rate for this module is 9600. Uh, everybody's setting it to 115.200. Okay, so I fully understand that. That again right there was that UART one I showed you. Another thing he... the iFlight thing is changing in RAM and battery backed up RAM is the data rate on the GPS. They're taking that value that's there and dividing it by 10 because it's the time between readings and they're taking it from 1 hertz to 10 and that's in rates right here measurement right here so what they're doing with that command they're taking a zero off this in truth and changing the rate, data rate they're up in the by 10 multiplying it by 10 that's what I did manually uh, yesterday or the last video when I was showing you uh, the last thing that they do in that I flight update I don't yet understand a and a use didn't say I was an expert with this yet did I did I They're changing that from false to true. They're changing it from a zero to a one. 
and I don't know what ANA use is. That could be very substantial to the could be telling those GPS's that you currently think are not usable for navigation to be usable. I'm gonna set this one just because I do want to play this f with this further after I get off the video. So we're gonna do what they're doing. We're just gonna do it by hand. No, let's do it like they did it. There's nothing there to save. And we imported all of these. And we're not gonna do this one, this one, this one. This one, this one, this one. Of course, this is going to flash. I'll leave it there just to show you it fails. So inside RAM and uh, battery backed up RAM, we're going to change use ANA from false to true by just clicking send here. Green, green for pass and red for failed. There's no flash memory in this module. At least that's what that's saying to me. And if you look now, this is now true. <laughs> now I have to go out and find out what use ANA is. <laughs> but I can handle whatever baud rate. I can handle whatever uh, rate on the uh, sensing. But if this is something about the antenna or something, that might change things. Because so far as I have been playing with that. So that, that just tells you what that little file that you download for the iFlight fix doing. Oh, there's another part to that iFlight fix. And what they're doing there is... Yeah, we'll save that. What they're doing there is... They're doing this via offline and they're coming in here and having you grab what you're doing here is you're grabbing the almanac for the next seven days and you can do up to 35 let's do it for 14 and you can download that usable up to 14 days from now and we can transfer that and reset that into the module itself that's the almanac that's going into battery backed up RAM it will be good for the next 14 days when you power up from power down you won't have to sit there and wait for the full almanac to be downloaded the first time the module's ever fired up. Or if I don't do anything, if I leave this powered down for the next three weeks, even though uh, the battery backup's still good and the data's there, it's out of date by a week now, three weeks from now. Uh, it'll have to read the whole almanac from the satellites again, and that takes a lot of time. So this is the thing that makes startup boom. And let's see, what else did they do? No, that's one thing that the iFlight does, and the other thing the iFlight does is the importing of that file and just sets a few just sets three items differently in the uh, module okay now then there's a companion video with that I'm not ready to talk about yet but uh, Josh Bardwell does a fix on a beta flight platform using that iFlight information. And as part of the fix, he turns off auto botting in a beta flight. 
I can't find a way to turn off auto botting in our new copter. So otherwise, everything else looks pretty much the same as it has past two days. Got lots of satellites. I didn't power down after that uh, change made to that antenna or whatever it is. So we're going to completely power down. I'm going to remove the COM port from the system. We'll power it back up. I didn't change the baud rate. And I let it sit here for a while and gather everything because it does take a bit. Even with the full almanac in the battery backed up RAM, it has to be checked. What the almanac information that's in the RAM has to be checked against what it can see in the satellites in the sky. And there's a way to do that. So there's still going to be some startup delay. After it figures out that its almanac that it has stored is valid, then things will take place quickly. And the requirement to download that almanac from the SAT system at a slower, slow, slow rate is uh, eliminated. That's all that iFlight's doing. Uh... And I have to go in to find out what that one variable parameter ANA. What is that? And what does it do to the module? And while I give it time to sit here for five or ten minutes, I'm going to go see if I can find out that information real quick. Okay, real quick, we've got data into the GPS now. It's set there long enough. And I found out what this feature is. It talks about it right here a little bit. Assist now autonomous. Well, autonomous is our big thing we're looking at here and if you go out and look for information on that what you find is all it does is store previously connected satellites for a longer time frame than default so what they're doing there if you're downloading that almanac in there for 14 days like I did there's a default someplace in their software that says only look for X number of days let's say it says seven and you want it to be other than that, this would be the area where you tell it ignore that timeout period or leasing period as we call it in computers frequently. And I guess if you download it for 35 days, you're going to be in big trouble on day 36 if you don't either... Uh, download it again or take it out of autonomous mode to me I, I, that's just my way of thinking or you will be sitting there on whatever information was there for the 35th day on the 6th, 7th, 38th, 39th, etc. I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to go any deeper on that. So I might not uh, do that part of the iFlight and that might mean the uh, Almanac that you download for X number of days over here. Right here, seven days worth. If you don't change that to autonomous mode, if the default's one, you just lost six days you downloaded. So, if you want to know more about that, dig a little deeper. Me, hmm. I hope to fly often enough where it gets downloaded, <laughs> where it's always fast. <laughs> So, now down to the crux. I cannot find any difference in this GPS and the other two I had before this one came in the door. 
it's hooking up a bunch of satellites 25 right now in the basement but only seven right now nine are usable in navigation and looks like 17 of them aren't well and there's some not tracked I'll just take those out of the mix so right now I don't have a solution for my problem because I don't think if I put this GPS in either one of those quads I don't think it's going to do any differently from the two I've had here and I've already gone into here and reverted those other two back to the way they came out of the bag and checked them and they are working exactly all three of these are working exactly the same right now so right now we're waiting to see what happens with a flywoo version of this are there flash memories on their module that may help with Ardu? Is Ardu sending commands to this GPS that is turning off some features? Uh, what is this used in navigation stuff here? That's all still a mystery to me, but I'll keep digging. So for right now, this would be the end of today's video if the flywheel doesn't come in. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and publish this with this statement. If the flywheel comes in, you'll see video three of before I leave Friday just showing a little bit uh, a tidbit about the flywoo we'll kind of know if flywoo operates the same as the matex or if there's a great joy <laughs> to be had when the flywoo's connected uh, so if you don't see video three of this is two of and hopefully there will only be a three of three because <laughs> the fly will come in. It will get connected maybe a week from now. Maybe next Friday is when I will come back. We come back Thursday night, I believe. I might have my hands on it Thursday night. It would be the soonest possible if it doesn't arrive before we leave in the morning. And I, at this point, do not think it will. I've never had two... United States Postal Service deliveries in one day. <laughs> and the uh, mailman already brought the first GPS. So, thank you guys.